Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And today let's find out what's on the hook. Today I have several things to talk about. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. I've had a great week and a half or so to prepare for this video and to um, uh, have some family things going on. So I just wanted to say hello and uh, throw this video out if you have something to drink and go ahead and get that if you have something to work on go ahead and get that and uh, tell you a few things i'm going to do today i have a couple of announcements i have uh, a stack of cowls here that i want to talk about c-o-w-l-s cowls and those are some quick gift ideas that you can make for your friends and for crochet worthy family you can also um, use different kinds of yarns and I'll be talking about some yarn reviews here also opening a knit crate uh, that just came the other day I want to show you that and also want to show you what I made with the knit crate so I've already made something out of it I have a little bit of happy mail I may have already said that so um, let's get into it first of all two announcements I sent an email out last week and it included two free patterns to the community and if you're not in the community go down and click the link it's at the top of the description box and you can go down there and join the community and receive emails from me with either free patterns you'll get a free pattern when you sign up it's free to be a member of the community you don't have to pay anything there's no money given at, you don't have to give any money at all you just be a member of the community and um, we uh, I invite you to write comments at the bottom of my videos I I get sometimes 200 to 300 comments and I know I have giveaways every every week and I enjoy doing that and I enjoy seeing comments from y'all you thanked me for the patterns from last week so many times on my email that came in so I had a lot of emails if I didn't answer you I apologize but uh, thank you, thank you for your thank yous for the patterns that I sent. I hope you enjoy those. They're easy to make. One of them was uh, the leg, the boot tops. We call them leg warmers or boot tops that I sent a pattern for. Um, I guess it was last Wednesday. I'm not really sure when it went out. Th Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I don't know. But anyway, there were boot tops. And there was also a Parisian scarf, which I thought was really cute. And those went out last week. Now, I'm going to resend that email out tomorrow, I guess. I'll probably just do it tomorrow. And if you have time and you've seen this video and you want to sign up for the community, you can click that link down in the bottom of this description, uh, in the description also, box. Also, please like this video. If you're going to be here for a while or coming back to it, please go ahead and like this video. If you know you're going to like it, I hope you'll like it. And we'll have lots of things to talk about today. So don't forget to do that because that helps me with my YouTube uh, algorithm, which is a special way that they decide who sees my videos and who doesn't see the videos. So that helps quite a bit. My second announcement is that I have um, joined a collaboration with Annie's and I'm going to crochet their Moroccan tiles afghan in the holiday uh, spice colorway. Now they have five colorways of this afghan. If you're familiar with Annie's you know that they have an afghan kit club that you buy a kit every month or it comes automatically every month and you build this beautiful afghan with special stitches and just gorgeous beautiful afghan i've always loved it i've had my finger on the trigger to click it before and then i thought you know what i will just do this collaboration with annie so they agreed i agreed and so we got that to going together they are sending me the kits and i'm going to show you the progress that i'm making on the afghan this will make me accountable to finish it unlike the uh, one that I started last year and a lot of people have asked me what happened to it well I get busy and I don't do it but this way it's it's sent to you in kits every month if you're not familiar with this and that way you just do what is in the kit for the month you don't have to try to finish the whole afghan or it, it, it makes you accountable to yourself honestly if you think you're going to get a kit this week well you need to get busy and finish that piece of the afghan that they sent you the pattern for so, and, the, and the yarn for they send that every month and i think it's a th a 10 month project so i figure by the end of fall of next year my afghan will be finished and i'll be so excited now what i wanted to ask you if you want to crochet along with me you can do that um, if you decide to buy the afghan kit club 
uh, subscription, then you can do that. It lasts for 10 months. And there's a link down in the description box that you can click on and join the kit club. And your first kit is 50% off. And I know there are other specials here and there. You'll see them. But you know that with my link, you can get 50% off your first kit. And you can get it and try it. And if I think you can quit anytime you want to. But... Uh, this, the smart thing to do would be to stay with it if you can. It's probably $20 a month plus shipping. So it's $20 a month, but for 10 months, and I did make one statement one time about I thought it was too expensive, but honestly, when I think about all the yarn that they're going to send, the beautiful pattern and the intricate uh, pattern of the afghan, which is not just rows and rows back and forth, it's actually creating this beautiful afghan with a lot of detail. And you'll create the afghan, and then in 10 months, you'll have the afghan ready to put on your sofa or your chair, and it'll be ready for um, the fall and winter. Now, I chose the holiday uh, spice colorway. There are four other colorways, and they're very, very beautiful. Uh, they have one that's just a... Uh, a cream color, total cream color afghan. There are no colors in it but that. That's a beautiful afghan as well because the stitch patterns are so gorgeous. Then there are two or three others and a couple that I've seen uh, YouTubers make, but I wanted to select a different one and I wanted to have one that would be ready for me next holiday season. So I wouldn't have to hurry so much to build the afghan. I can just do it month by month and we'll see how that goes. So I'm doing that and you're welcome to crochet along with me. If you want to buy the afghan kit, you can do that. Please use my link because that way they'll know that you came from my video. Also, if you're crocheting along with me, you can send a picture of what you do that month. Send it to me on email, not on Facebook, but send it to me on email and I will feature you in my next video. Now I plan to put out a video every month, opening the kit and then, um, showing the progress that I make on that particular kit. So it will be an organized set of videos and they'll be on a playlist on my YouTube channel. So you can find them easily. I'm going to label them episode one, episode two, episode three. So you can find the episodes that you want to watch and maybe you can see uh, my progress. I won't be able to show you the pattern because it's a paid for, obviously paid for pattern. I won't be able to show you the pattern or the videos. Now the video that comes with the afghan, there's a video of someone showing you how to do the stitches. So I thought that was really, really great. Um, I can't wait to see the first one. So they're going to send me links for all that. And um, I will give you my opinion about the videos and what they cover and how helpful they are to me. So that way I, I'm going to look at all the videos. I, even if I don't use them, uh, I will look at all the videos because I do love a written pattern. A written pattern means a lot to me, so I really love that part of it. But if I get stuck, I can watch the video and quickly see what I did wrong and what I need to correct to make the stitches come out right or whatever it is. I'm sure there are counted stitches on this, which is not my favorite way to crochet. But on something like this, you pretty much need uh, a stitch uh, count so that you know you're exactly right because it's in a, uh, a symmetrical form. An afghan is symmetrical, so it's going to have tiles and stripes and all that in there. So I do need to keep up with stitch counts, and I can do that. But I will probably use the video, and I will watch each one and let you know what I think about the videos that come along with the afghan. So feel free to stitch along with me, and let me know if you are. If you decide to stitch along with me, send me an email. Let me know who you are. And uh, I'll uh, mention you all along as we go through the videos in the next 10 months. Enough about announcements. I've made all the announcements I'm going to make. Let me show you a couple of happy mails that I've received. Here are the beautiful earrings that were sent to me. Let me get that stop there. By Sylvia and Wendy. So gorgeous. Thank you so, so much. These are beautiful. I will probably wear those in a, in a future video. I've kind of got these in my ears right now, but I'm not going to change out just this second. But thank you, Sylvia and Wendy, for that beautiful card and the gorgeous earrings. I so appreciate that. Then I also got a card from Natalie's Closet in Seminole, Florida, and she sent this pretty card to me. And it's a Chris, my first Christmas card. Thank you, Natalie. I believe your name is Natalie. Natalie, Mom, and Miley. 
uh, you know who you are. So thank you for my first Christmas card. Very pretty. And thank you for the earrings as well, uh, Wendy and Sylvia. So gorgeous. My first Christmas present. Let's open up this knit crate that I received in the mail. This is the Forest of the Elves theme uh, for this particular month. Let me get that over there where you can see it. Forest of the Elves. And this is for November. Knit crate. The, the, the colorways are, you know, forest colors forest colors really pretty very pretty and the yarn that I received for the knit and crochet club colors mine was called um, full sun labrius puffo and the colorway again is full sun this is 100% fine highland wool super bulky and there are 60 yards on the Hank and I've already caked this up. This is what it looks like caked up Some really pretty colors in there. I love the colors. They are quite lovely And those are the colors that are in the theme on the postcard actually very close to it Now that is the yarn that I received and when I received the yarn, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to make something out of this because it's so big. I used this hook, which is the PQ 15-millimeter uh, clover hook that I start my uh, video every, every time I release a video. This is at the beginning and at the end as well when I say what's on the hook. This is the hook that I use because you can see it better. It's huge. It's PQ. And that is the hook that I used on this yarn. And here is the cowl that I made. Now that we're moving into the cowl section of our program, this is the cowl that I made uh, the other day. Let me find the, the seam. I don't even see the seam. Here it is. All right, so I'm going to try this on. This is the cowl that I made the other day. And it is like working with soft rope. <laughs> it's huge. This yarn is huge. Look at this. Look how big the stitch, the stitch definition is. There are, look how big the top of that stitch is. It's huge. And uh, I like it. Uh, it's interesting to look at. I wouldn't want to make everything out of this, but it is a pretty cowl. I'm going to put this over the other one so you can see it a little bit better. It actually looks pretty good with this sweater. So uh, I like it. I like it very much. And I would make, wear it with a popular blue, blue jean jacket because there's blue. There is blue in there. There's yellow in here. And this burgundy color, which really is picked up by the sweater. So... Um, I, I like it. It's different, and um, this is made. <laughs> and this is made with my super simple cow pattern, and so totally easy. So totally easy. Um, that is a size six, and I believe this is. I consider this at least a six. It may even be a seven. It's huge. Look at the stitches on there. <laughs> it's really, really big. But another cow that you can make for someone for Christmas that is easy to make. You can make this in um, a couple of hours. I think that's all it took me. And I wasn't even in a hurry because using this size hook is not easy. Using this size hook is not easy for me because uh, my hand gets really tired when I'm using a very, very large hook. So I don't want to make a sweater out of it. I don't, you know, I don't want to use it for something big, but a cowl is perfect, absolutely perfect. It's easy to make. It's done in a strip and then you sew it together and you're finished. You don't even have to put an edging on it because the edging looks really pretty, just like it is. So that is the knit crate that I received this week. Now, also in the knit crate bag was a little uh, notebook with a pen and very helpful. I love these. I put these in my project bags if I want to make a note about something that I'm working on. I always have a, a booklet in there or a, a pad or something and a pen so that's perfect and it has a little closure on the bottom so it's not flopping around in your project bag so I really like that. There is a process for knitting uh, simplified grafting. I don't know what that is. Set up and repeat. I don't know what that is but that so that's what's on the little notebook. 
Uh, I guess if you were a knitter, that might be helpful. I don't know, but it, it wasn't helpful for, for me, but I didn't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But that was in the Knit Crate bag that came. And so um, I just wanted to show you that. That's what came from Knit Crate last week. I, I just want to show you a few cows that I've made. You've seen this before. This is the Ganymede Cow by Fiber Flux. This is how it's set up. And this is a knitted cow, and I knitted this with so, super super bulky yarn and crystal is still wearing my skirt that i made <laughs> she's still wearing it so i'm going to put her over here and uh let crystal stand there thank you crystal for modeling that that is the ganymede cow now what i'm wearing this is so super nice i really like this this is um this was a takeoff on the Ganymede cow. This is totally crocheted and it has a lace pattern on it. And the only thing similar to the Ganymede cow is the, the size and that it's sewn in a certain spot. And I'm thinking that because it is really tight around the neck, this is a 14 inch neckline or neck opening, 14 inch neck opening. I have a very large head. I have a 23 inch head. And when I go to make hats, I always have to make kind of the largest one. Um, I don't know why that is. It's just a genetic thing. But anyway, this was really hard to get over my head. Really, I did manage to get it over my head, but it just, it was really hard to get over my head. So I'm going to, I'm going to write this pattern up. It's not a difficult pattern. I used this, I used this. This is washed head or washed worsted. This is not worsted. This is very, very small. This is a, a DK at the most, I think. But some people might have a, you know, they might disagree. Let me get that over there. This is called a worsted weight. But honestly, I thought it was a fingering weight until I looked closer at the tag. So this is a worsted weight yarn. And it's the same yarn that came with this yarn in the uh, Knit Crate Malabrigo box and you received one skein of this and one skein of this red which is quite gorgeous and I as, a, as an aside I tried to find another skein of this and I did find some from Jeanette in Lenore City Tennessee and Jeanette sent me another skein of this I bought it from her she was very sweet to contact me and tell me she had that so that I can have a little bit more of that yarn and I would like to make um, maybe a spring top out of it I'm not really sure I was going to make a red top for winter but I uh, have a lot of other projects going on and I won't have it done by Christmas so I'm thinking of making a very simple summer uh, either knitted or crocheted top. I know that seems crazy to y'all because you know I don't knit very much. I'm, the only thing I've ever knitted was that Ganymede cowl that I just showed you. And uh, I feel good because I finished it and I could actually wear it. It's a nice cowl, but this is a takeoff on that. This has been inspired, I should say, inspired by. But I did spend the time uh, designing this pattern and I, I will tell you a different way to actually connect the cowl in order to get it to stay on your neck. There is another way to do it. So I'm going to write all that up. Uh, I, I like this shape of the cowl and see in the back it just goes straight across. I'll turn around if you can see that. It just goes straight across in the back. It doesn't go uh, as far down as the Ganymede cowl but it is um, a nice cow because it covers your chest it's very very warm and it also covers your upper back so i think that's a good shape for a cow if you really want to stay warm that's a really good way to make one plus the the lace goes up in a diagonal i think that's really pretty i really like the way this looks and if you use a really nice yarn say you can even go to joann's and get luxury yarn i didn't i guess i knew that but i've never bought any there but i get mine from knit crate but it's the same type of yarn it's um kettle or hand dyed and it's made of some nice fibers and they're very bouncy and uh, they feel good on your skin now this is a merino base but it's been washed so it's super i guess it's super wash merino wool yes 100 percent super wash merino wool so uh, it's very, 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 very soft. And the red is the same. It's Malabrigo and very, very nice. I said very, very too many times there. <laughs> but 
but I like it. I like it a lot. So that is what I made. This cowl, this is what I'm wearing today. So this cowl is called the Easy Lace Cowl, and, and I'll have that up on my Etsy shop, and I'll let you know when it's out there. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to cost very much at all. Just a little bit enough to get it published on my Etsy shop, and uh, that way you can grab it and you know make one of these if you want to. I really like it. It's nice for a gift, but it did take a while to crochet because it's made in a long strand. It's it's quite long and quite wide, so it takes a little while to make it, but it's worth it. I think um, when you use uh, a smaller yarn than the Ganymede Cow, that was way too big, but it was good enough for me because I, I had to knit it, and knitting in a big uh, knitting with the large yarn is much easier to start with, of course. So that's that was a good thing for me. Moving along, I'm not excited about using this large, large wool. This is pretty, but I won't be making any more of those. That's just not in my wheelhouse. But anyway, I wanted to show you some of these cows. So this is the Easy Lace Cow. It'll be coming out. This is, and somebody asked me about this, this is my joyful flower cow and this goes with the joyful flower sweater that i designed about three years ago now at least two years ago and i love this cow this is the same color palette as the sweater it's actually the same yarn and i'll show you that this is the pattern with this is my this is me wearing the sweater and the cowl along with it and the the cowl is included in the pattern on my Etsy shop so you'll see this pattern on my Etsy shop this is the joyful flower uh, Christmas sweater and the cowl is included in that so it wasn't at first but it is now it's included in that so you can make a cowl to go over the sweater and stay warm and then if you get hot you can take the cowl off so that's how I designed that one and I'll try this one on this is very, very pretty. And what's pretty about this is that you have a stripy, beautiful yarn. And look at that. It just turned out so nice. You're using front post, back post, trebles, doubles, singles, using chain uh, edging. There's a you know a little bit of a chain edging on this. And this is really, really pretty. I like this one. But um, so beautiful, so beautiful. I'll let you look at that up close. This is just gorgeous. Look at that. Look at the colorways in there. Really, really pretty. And there's that edging with the uh, chain edging there. Very, very easy to do. Um, this is where you can practice your stitches. If you do a few rows of trebles, then you'll understand trebles. I think this has a lace pattern. All kinds of patterns in there, but um, I honestly don't know <laughs> which pattern I use. I could go back and research it, but when I decided to do this video and talk about all the cows, I don't want to get too deep into detail, but I just want to show you what you can do if you're making gifts for people, or if you just want to do something for yourself. Now, this is the Falling Leaves cow. This is the one I made for the fall lookbook, and um, kind of a light colored yarn. Um, I believe this is a fingering yarn. It's really pretty. Um, I love the way it turned out with the stitch pattern that I have in here. Really very beautiful. And again, the yarn always matters. When you're making something for around your neck like this, you don't need as much yarn. So you can spend a little bit more on it or find a little bit more uh, fancy yarn that you want to make a cowl with. So um, I really like that. That one is pretty and it's very lightweight, but it's wool. So it's very warm as well. So. Uh, that looks really pretty over a white uh, turtleneck, very light color, really, really pretty. And that is the Falling Leaves Cow, and I have that here somewhere. I'll show it to you. Here it is. This is what it looks like on the Etsy shop. That is uh, part of the fall lookbook that I did this year. So I, I did a cowl and a skirt and a jacket and a poncho, all those things I did. Here's another version of... I believe this is the Falling Leaves Cow as well. And I did this in a different kind of yarn. I think this was my first prototype, actually. But again, it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. And uh, you can see that when you get it crocheted up, it just gives the whole cow a different look. So beautiful, so beautiful. I really, really like it. So that is 
a couple of versions of the falling leaves. I think that this one is even narrower than the other. This one is wider. You see, you can see it. It's a little bit wider. So it's a little bit wider that way. I think they're the same length. Yeah, they're the same length. So uh, you can make them however you want. You don't have to make them exactly like I say. Now, here's another example from last year. And this is some super bulky yarn <laughs> that I use. I, did, I think it's just all, uh, it looks like it's all either half double crochet or double crochet, the whole thing. And I just wanted to make up this yarn because I wasn't going to let it sit around. This is another cowl that is so beautiful. I think it's the color. Let me get up here where you can see it. This is a kind of like a peach colorway. It's really pretty. Really, really pretty. And uh, I made this in, I don't know, two or three hours. It just doesn't take long at all. And I'm sure I use this particular hook for this one. So um, soft. It's not scratchy at all. I think this one, he, this is a little bit scratchy, but I can live with that. It's just, um, this is just such an odd color. It's so beautiful uh, for fall and winter. I really like this color. So that's another one of my cows. I'm just tearing up my hair here, but who cares? All right. And now this is the longest cow that I've ever made. But this is made with the falling leaves pattern, and it's done in a twice the length. So, uh, I'm not sure where the end of this, here it is, right here. So to wear this, you just put it on, and then you flip it over, and you just throw it over your head like that. And then you can mess around with it, <laughs> make it beautiful. But this is another very nice yarn. I think this is Malabrigo yarn. So gorgeous, and really, really soft and squishy. And this came in my box, I don't know, last box I guess it was and I decided I was going to use it and it's so so beautiful I really love it I'll be wearing this this winter <laughs> because it's super nice really love that now the um, the easy lace cowl that I have on now I'm going to make that next in this yarn. I've already got it balled up. This is really pretty. This is Happy Little Tree Colorway. It's alpaca and 10% cashmere. And I thought, you know, I don't know what to do with that. And I thought, you know what? It's so soft. I think I'll make one of these out of it. And I have, you know, enough yarn to do the same amount of yarn as I had of this particular yarn. So um, I'd like to do that just for fun, just to make it up and see how it works. This is a worsted. This is actual worsted uh, size yarn. The one that I have on, the Easy Lace Cowl, is not, um, I don't think it's as big as worsted, but we'll see. Once I start this one, we'll see what happens with it. So I haven't made any progress on my whips, except to um, work, work on the other sleeve of my multicolored Cardi. Now on to whips. I don't have very many whips to show you because I finished this and that was one of my whips from last week. So I did finish this and I've made some progress on my diamond painting. I'll show you that right now. Yes, I am organized, <laughs> but you can see that I have a lot of containers with a lot of yarn and here are my diamond paintings that I haven't done yet. I've given away several to a couple of ladies at church and because they were interested in diamond painting. So I went ahead and gave those up, uh, a couple that I was not going to work on. Here's one of my carts uh, right there. This is a rolling cart that I have a lot of my diamond painting accessories on. And this is my easel and you'll notice it is empty. It's empty and I'll show you why in just a minute. But this is my light pad. I wanted to show you this. This is really a great accessory to purchase if you're a diamond painter. And this is what it does. It gets brighter and brighter. See how I can see how bright that is. When you put your diamond painting on there, you can see all the way through it. And it's so easy to find the little squares or the, the circles on your diamond painting. So just a little tip there. This is a um, crafty mint. Oh, you can't see it. Let me turn this off. This is a crafty mint. 
brand. I really like it. It has a connector here that is um, uh, it's connected to a an actually an electrical outlet. It's not a USB. So I really like that about it. I don't know if they still sell these or not, but this one is actually a 14 by 20, 11 by 14, and that's from this point to this point. And it's a little bit bigger than that. See, there's another a half inch there. I don't know why that is, but it's a very nice light pad. And you can also cl clip your diamond painting to it because you just lift it up. And I, I bought these little clips off Amazon. I don't even remember when, but <clears throat> you can clip your diamond painting onto the light pad right there. See how I did that? So uh, my diamond painting's not here, so I'm gonna show you where it is. So here are the two current diamond paintings that I'm working on. I'm working on Angel playing a flageolet over here. Absolutely gorgeous. And I am right here on my progress on that, right there. I've done just about half of it, I guess. A little less than half. And I've started it again over here on this side and I'm working my way across. So she's in time or he's in timeout. And then I am working on Starry Night Santa and love this painting. It's been a lot of fun to do and I'm all finished except for the star right there. And I have a little bit of the star diamonds as well in the trees to do. But right now I'm pretty much finished with it and I plan to seal it tomorrow or this evening whenever I get finished with it. I'm going to quickly seal it and take it over to the framer so that I can get it up over my fireplace uh, before Christmas, but after Christmas is okay. I can still look at Santa. He's okay. But I just love that painting. It is so cute. And it's beautiful colors too as well. The pink and the red are really, really nice. They've been blended very nicely in this particular part of the painting. So uh, I really like that. And one thing I did add, love the green too, the green bag that he's carrying. <clears throat> but one thing I did was, um, this reindeer was all brown and I added a red nose to the reindeer just by adding three diamonds right there at the end of his snout. And I just, think that's such a cute touch. It's like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer standing there with Santa. So uh, I felt like that was a cute touch and you don't really notice it pretty far back, but you do if you get up closer, you can see that red nose right there. So this is the progress I've made on my diamond paintings this week. I hope you I hope enjoyed that. Uh, I always like to give a status on my diamond painting because I have a lot of people who say they like to see that and I try not to drag it out too long. I'll just show you where I am and uh, where I'm going with my diamond painting. So hope you enjoyed that. Now on to whips. Whips, whips, I just have one. And this is a major project. Um, it's not hard, it's just a major project. And I'm making this particular uh, multicolored Cardi. I'm making this from the multicolored Cardi pattern that I made originally in some number three or some, some DK weight, uh, just a stash buster. Look at that. I, I, I was really busting my stash on that. And I made this um, all in one from the bottom up. It's crochet from the bottom up. So uh, you go from one side all the way around the back to the other side and come around to the front. So most of your crocheting is done in the initial part of this particular sweater. So if you have a stripey yarn, then the stripes don't get mixed up on the underarms. They go all the way around your body. So it does make it look a little bit more put together. Now, this is what it looks like so far. And I do have about five inches left. And you know, this may have been where I left it last week. I don't know. I haven't really worked on this. I wanted to finish this. And I have another project that I'm going to show you in just one second. But this is the, fa this is the yarn that I'm using. Uh, the Spun Colors, it's a number four weight, so gorgeous, called Woodland, and this is a premier uh, yarn, not sponsored, but it is a very nice yarn. I have to say it's acrylic and superwash merino, 35% of that is superwash merino, and it gives the yarn uh, just such a nice feel. I, I really love the way 
this feels. It's squishy and it's probably going to be nice and warm and that's what I'm going for when I make a sweater for the winter time. This is heavy. Now I might make this again and I think I have already started one. I need to go get my whip and I will show you what progress I've made on this other multicolored card. Y'all remember last week when I was giving away some Karen Latte Cake. Well, just one Karen Latte Cake, which was the cream color. This is not it. I did actually send away the one to the person who won the Karen Latte Cake. And you know who you are. I hope you enjoy that Latte Cake. It's so gorgeous. And there are a lot of yards on here too. It's a bulky five weight. And there are 530 yards on this thing. So you can make a lot of things with that. A lot of garments, a lot of different things. But what I wanted to show you was this brilliant idea I had to order some more of that. Now, I didn't think I could find any, and one of my lovely subscribers, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent it to me, a link to this yarn, directly to this yarn, and it came up with uh, stock that I could buy. So I bought three cakes of the Karen Latte Cake Lovely Layers, that's the name of it, the latte cakes in cream and that's the color of this cup so gorgeous and I knew I wanted to make a sweater of it I just wanted to make a sweater so I got my J hook out which is the 6.0 millimeter hook and I've decided to make a a sweater and I already have all the way to the underarm done on this, this is so gorgeous look at this beautiful beautiful sweater and if you'll notice down here at the bottom the ribbing is done with a couple of skeins of Vanna, Vanna's Choice in the color linen, L-I-N-E-N. -E and I thought, that is a nice contrast there. Not too much contrast, just a little bit, but it is beautiful. And look how it turned out. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Now, it's going to be about that long, which is, you know, at my hip here. My waist is up here, so it's at my hip. So it's about that long. And I have it marked already with my stitch markers. And in the pattern, I tell you how to do that in the Multicolor Cardi. You, uh, it's an easy way to make a sweater from mid around to the other mid, <laughs> from front to front. So you start here, let me get this right, you start here and you crochet all the way around and you come in on the other side. So it's all done in one piece and when you get this far you have made a huge dent in the sweater. I mean all you have to do then is mark it with your stitch markers like I tell you you don't have to count any stitches you mark the stitch marker and then you start up um, under the sleeve and do the fronts and then you do the back uh, and then you'll pop the sleeves on and I'll be putting this ribbing right here on the ends of the sleeves and I think I'm going to take it up the front as well and uh, I'm hoping that I'll have enough yarn in the Vanna's Choice to make a collar for this particular sweater. I want a collar on it. Don't have to have a collar, but I'd like to have a collar on this one. And it won't be in the white, the cream color. It will be in the um, the Vanna's Choice because that is an acrylic and I think that it will hold up better as the collar. Now, I will tell you one thing about this. This is interesting. I love this. I love this uh, latte cake yarn, but it is not for every pattern. What I did was, it's a super, it's an extra bulky or a bulky five, and I used a, a J hook. Now that is unusual to use a J hook on this, but it really is a small yarn. And if you, I'll show you this. This is what it looks like. Um, it's a kind of a small yarn because the uh, the bulky is, I think, the halo on it. See all those little hairs on there? That is what. That's why they call it a bulky yarn. Let me get this where you can see it, maybe on, on my sweater here. Um, there's a lot of uh, halo on this. It's, it's, it's crazy. Look at all that. See all those little hairs? Um, it's really super soft though. I mean to tell you, I just love this yarn. I love it. But I made it with a smaller hook so that it wouldn't stretch. 
I know that some people say if you make it with, uh, if you use this yarn and you make it with a large hook, it tends to stretch. So I tightened it up. I'm using a J hook and I'm also using a ribbing along the bottom and around the sides so that, and at the bottom of the sleeves, to kind of hold it in place. And if I did the whole thing with the latte cake, I believe it would just be too stretchy. So I'm, I'm doing it with uh, a J hook, I'm crocheting it, and see there's a little bit of stretch there, but not much. There's not very much stretch because I've tightened up the gauge on this particular fabric. So just um, something you might want to take into consideration if you're going to use a Karen latte cake for a garment or even a hat. Um, you, you definitely want to tighten up your gauge so that the fabric is not full of holes, which is, looks pretty and all that, it looks lacy and all that, but when you start wearing it, it just, it just gets longer and longer and longer. So um, uh, the reason I'm tightening it up with that rib and the Vanis Choice yarn is um, to kind of keep it cinched into place. We'll see how it works. But that is the whip that I'm currently been working on so diligently, loving it. I want to finish this soon and then I'll finish my multicolored cardi as well. But I'm making this by the multicolored cardi pattern. I'm just not using all different colors and I'm not using a stripey yarn either. I'm using a solid color yarn and it works the same way. It just it works the same way and I think it'll be um, a good fit. I made it a tiny bit longer than I did the um, Premier Yarn uh, Spun Colors Cardi. I'm making it a little bit longer than that and a little bit longer than the original uh, Multicolor Cardi that I made the first time. So that's the progress I've made on my whips this week. Okay, let's talk about giveaways. Here we go. I know that all four of the keywords were started with B. It was blue blush, baby bay. And y'all mostly used all of them. Not everybody wanted everything. And I totally get that. I don't want you to sign up for it if you don't want it. And that way, others will have a better chance. So the first thing we're giving away, and this is the um, beautiful Malabrigo yarn. I don't know what the name of it is. I know that it's merino wool. I think pretty sure it's merino wool but there it is right there it's a roving yarn quite gorgeous this is pretty heavy this is a little over 100 grams so um, you can make something with this i don't know what but you could give it a try it's a beautiful luxury yarn if you have never had any luxury yarn you would you would be able to understand why everybody loves it it's a little more expensive than um, the regular big box brands but um, when you make things up in this you really they're really special so i wanted y'all to have some of this this is the um, first giveaway gift that we have and the keyword was blue the second giveaway gift is yarn b and this is blush size three yarn it's merino wool and acrylic i think it's 60 30 um, maybe not it might be 50 50 um, let me check. Yes, 50, 25 acrylic, 25 nylon. So it's really, 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 really soft. So beautiful. And uh, it's called Must Be Merino. 227 yards on, on the ball. So I don't know why I bought this, but I really love it. I'm not going to have any more girls. I'm not going to have any girl grandchildren that I know of. So I'm going to give this away. That's probably why I bought it. So that will go to giveaway gift winner number two and then the third giveaway gift is baby b sweet delight and this is a very beautiful yarn it's flannel marled and it is not got it doesn't have any wool in it there's no wool in this so if you are concerned about using wool in a baby product then this does not have any wool it's all acrylic and polyamide so it's very 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 soft um, there are quite a few yards on here too they're 377 yards and it is a size three yarn it's a lightweight yarn so look at that that is so gorgeous I don't know why I bought this either but um, it's really nice never been used of course that's not a frog or finish that's an actual um, ball of yarn that hasn't been used now and unlike this, this is Woolies Thick and Quick in the Hudson Bay color. Everybody knows what this is. Very, very soft, and it's very, very big. I think this is a number five, number six, super bulky. Number six, super bulky. 
Look at that. Some beautiful colors in there. Really pretty colors. They've had this color at least for two or three years, and they keep um, re-upping it, so people must like it. Um, she's wearing a hat with it on. See, there you go. There's a hat. Um, I started a sweater with this, and I don't like it, but there are six skeins of this. On each skein is, uh, let's see how many yards are on here. There are 87 yards on each skein. So that's a lot of... Um, bulky yarn that you can take and do something with. So six skeins of this will go to giveaway winner number four. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these gifts this week. Here we are at the computer and I have already filled in the first gift keyword right there is blue and answered my question. So let's find out how many comments we had on last week's video for this and that would be 160 okay that's about what we usually have <laughs> so let's start let's find out who wins the blue luxury yarn from uh, I think it's Malabrigo so that would be Michelle Morris Michelle Morris you have won the blue luxury yarn and let's see love blue right there there's the word blue in her comment so we will skip back over here and Michelle, congratulations, by the way. You've won that luxury yarn, Malice. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I'm going to type in the word blush, B-L-U-S-H. This is for the Baby Bee Blush yarn from Hobby Lobby. And let's do this. This is at 10, I mean, 1 plus 9. Okay, it's 10. And then animation. This is where people have asked me, they see their name going by. I turned that off right there for the last winner, Michelle. So I'm going to turn it back on, and we'll take a look at um, we'll take a look at what it looks like. I think that's what it used to be. Let's go over here and see who wins the blush yarn by Yarn B. And yes, this is the animation. Tia Hill, Tia Hill, you have won the Yarn B blush, beautiful blush yarn. Love it, and. Uh, Let's move on to our next person. Congratulations, by the way. All right, Baby is the next one, and that is also a Yarn Bee product. And let's go down here and answer this question. That is six is the answer. And so hit enter and find out how many comments we had with that word in the comment, and that was 148. So let's scroll over here and find out who wins the baby bee blush no it's not the blush it's the flannel marled excuse me holly and mistletoe holly and mistletoe and she put all of those words in there <laughs> so holly you have won the baby bee yarn and let's go over here here we are We're back up here and let's find out who wins the hudson bay colorway um, thick and quick yarn. I have to answer all these questions here. Let's find out how many people were after that one. 175 wanted the Hudson Bay Lime Brand Thick and Quick. So here we go. And Simona Mona, Moniova. Moniova. Simonia Moniova. Okay, she's got all of her keywords in there. <laughs> so, Simona, you have won the Lion Brand Thick and Quick Hudson Bay Colorway Yarn. And congratulations to all of our winners. So here we go again. For next week, I have four winners. The first winner will receive the Wool Ease Thick and Quick. And this is the Colorway Spice. It's a six-weight uh, yarn, and it also has... Uh, it has 106 yards on the ball, so you can make a little something with it. It's 80% acrylic, 20% wool, and the colorway is spice. Now, this is a spice color, but it's got some yellow in it. And can you see that? It's so beautiful. It really is. It's not just a solid color. It looks like it's got some mixture of different colors of spice and then a little yellow thrown in on the top. I really like that. It's beautiful but I don't have time to make this. So this is going to winner number one next week. The keyword there 
is spice s-p-i-c-e spice so be sure you put that in your comment if you're interested now the second winner will receive two full skeins and this part skein of premier snow cone this is 100 percent polyester it's a very fat yarn i think it's a number six um here is one of the here is one of the full uh, skeins super bulky number six and this is the colorway root beer root beer so it's really pretty i like it i made a bunny out of this if you remember it was a bunny or a dog i don't remember <laughs> it was one or the other so i uh, have used all i needed and i had two big skeins of this left and i also have a partial skein here so that will go to winner number two next week and the keyword is snow s-n-o-w snow so be sure to use that word in your comment if you're interested now, I also have some yarn that was sent to me by Peg Chandler. Peg, you are sweetie. Um, she sent me a lot of yarn, and I know I won't get to this one. I just know it, so I'm going to give this away in uh, Peg's honor. And this is the Bamboo uh, Fair Premier yarn. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. And there is one, two, three, four skeins of this in the bag. Four skeins. Bamboo Fair. 273 yards on the hank and 100 grams it's a light number three and let's see what it's made from um i think it's all bamboo yes yeah, so 60 percent round from bamboo and 40 percent cotton so talk about comfortable that is a really nice yarn right there really nice yarn and the colorway is coral so that will be the key word for this particular yarn it will be coral c-o-r-a-l be sure to put that in your um, comment and you will be in the running for this premier yarn uh, bamboo fair really nice it's um, i almost hate to give it away but i know that i don't have time i've already got my spring uh, outfits kind of in my mind what i want and this is not in the color scheme of things although it's a great and beautiful color look at that coral it is gorgeous i've almost talked myself out of giving this away <laughs> But that'll be for gift number three, and the keyword is coral. Gift number four is another skein of comfy cotton, and this is in the colorway poppy. Poppy, which is the key word, poppy. Beautiful red. Look at that. So gorgeous. Comfy cotton. It's a full skein. Pull it right out of the center there. And one of my favorite yarns, honestly, this, I, have, I still have some of it left, yeah, it's 392 yards on the cake, and it's 50% cotton, 50% polyester. Again, this is comfy cotton, and great for uh, summer makes or even winter makes. This is a beautiful color for Christmas, too. So I'm giving this away, and the key word there is poppy, P-O-P-P-Y, poppy. So for those four gifts, those are the key words. Be sure to put those in your comment if you are interested in being in the running for these gifts next week. Well, I'm going to leave that right there. Be sure to like this video. That helps me so much. Be sure to like it, and be sure to share it with a friend, anyone who likes to crochet and likes to diamond paint, you never know. So uh, you can sh send this, share this video with somebody that you love. And I would appreciate that. Now, for next week, I don't know what I'll be doing. I'll give you some updates on some whips. I will have my Afghan kit by then because it's already on the way. I'm so excited from Annie's collaboration. So I'll be collaborating with her or them and um, putting out some videos about the Moroccan tile holiday spice afghan this is a new colorway i'm really excited about it and i'll be making that if you're going to make it along with me be sure to email me let me know who you are and that you're going to be making this afghan kit and we can share pictures i'm going to do videos and if you send me a picture of your progress i will put that picture on my video and show everyone what you are doing so i'm really excited about that if you decide to maybe nobody will but who knows i might have some people that want to uh, crochet along with genie and that's going to be a 10-month project so there's plenty of time to put your feet up you don't have to crochet every day you can just crochet a little bit every month and have that afghan ready to go put on your chair or your sofa next fall oh my goodness it'll be it'll be fall before we know it um 
I'm looking forward to finishing it though. That'll be fun and I'll document all that on a playlist so you can find the episodes numbered sequentially so you don't have to worry about which one you might have missed and which one you didn't. So that's my upcoming project. I'm branching out. I know I usually talk about wearable crochet style and that is what I focus on but this will be another project that I can work into my uh, garment uh, pattern making and prototype crocheting and I can get all that done I'm not worried about it at all and I throw in diamond painting as well I gotta finish that angel playing the flageolet I gotta finish that because that is the one that's going to live on my mantelpiece I think I've um, replaced Monet I put him in the dining room and uh, Santa will go up there and then after Christmas and Epiphany Santa will come down and then we will put that Angel playing the flageolet up there for the year. If she'll fit. If he'll fit. It's a he, I guess. Um, either one. Uh, if they will fit uh, on the top of my mantle. And I'm really excited about that. I hope it fits. And I'll have to um, frame it so that it will fit if there is an issue with the, the inches that I have available there. That I'll have to take that into account when I go to the framers. Um, in a few weeks whenever I finish that one so anyway just wanted to let you know that I am excited about my afghan project so uh, I'm not giving up on crochet garments those are my very favorite things to do as you can see I have some projects right here that I'm thinking about doing and there's one in that bag right there that I'm thinking about doing and uh, I want to finish my sweaters the two sweaters that I have on the hook so I uh, hope you're working on some projects yourself and I uh, hope you're having a happy crochet day so I will see you next time join me then to find out what's on the hook <laughs>